everyone and welcome to today's assembly. So I'm going to show you a picture to start with and I want you to think, what do you think this picture means? Do you know what the picture is showing? What do you think you can see there? You can see a family of people. You can see a large table where they might be sharing something. You can see some drinks, perhaps some wine, some food and maybe special food. And if you have a little look, you might see that they're wearing something in particular on their heads. Maybe this can help. Looking here, you can see there's a book, but it's in rather strange writing. It's in a different language. You can see this plate, and this is quite significant. And what's on it is particularly significant, the way it's arranged. And then here, there's something flat, like a type of bread. So they're all clues. And then there is some wine in the cup. Now, this will really help you. So you can see it says Passover. So this assembly is about remembering Passover. And this is a special meal. And it celebrates freedom for the Jewish people. So I'm going to tell you about the story of Passover. So this year, Passover 2021 will begin on the evening of Saturday the 27th of March and end on the evening of Sunday the 4th of April. So it's a special time for the Jewish people when they look back and remember and they get together as family and they celebrate. And the actual Passover story, it's taken from the book of Exodus. So that's the Old Testament of the Bible before the birth of Jesus. And it's also in the Hebrew Bible, which is called the Torah. So this is why the writing looks very different. You can see a picture here with the pyramids. And that will give you a clue as to where this started, which country. So I hope you're thinking in your minds which country that might be. There it is, in the land of Egypt. You can see the camel, you can see the pyramids. The river Nile that we know about by the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea here. And there is Israel. So the people were in Egypt at the time of this story. And here is the Pharaoh. He was like the king, the ruler of Egypt. And often the Pharaohs were very mean people. They wanted to be very powerful and control everyone. And the first Passover, it happened a long time ago in Egypt, when this mean, powerful king called the Pharaoh ruled over Egypt. And he was worried that the Jewish people would one day rise up and fight against him. So he decided he needed to make them slaves and he made them work very hard for him. He made them build the cities and palaces. They had to work all day in the hot sun, really long hours. They didn't have lots to eat and they were beaten if they didn't work properly. So they were very unhappy as you can imagine. So the people thought, we need help. What can we do? So they just hated being slaves. So they cried out and asked God for help. So God responded and he chose this special person you can see over here to lead the Jewish people. And this person is Moses. So Moses, he went to the Pharaoh and he asked them, he said, God's not happy with the way you're treating the Jewish people. He wants you to let the Jewish people leave Egypt 
and go into the desert where they will be free. But the Pharaoh, he didn't want that. He stamped his foot and he shouted, no, I'll never let the people go. Moses warned him. He said, if you do not listen to God, many terrible things called plagues will come to your land. But the Pharaoh wouldn't listen. And so the plagues arrived. Now, I expect you've probably heard of the 10 plagues, but they are bad things, terrible things that were sent by God to the uh, people in Egypt. So there were things like, the first thing, he turned all the river, the river Nile, it was turned to blood. He sent frogs everywhere, just thousands and thousands, millions of frogs. He sent plagues of different, like lice, that would uh, eat up the crops, the people, flies everywhere, swarms of flies all around them. And he caused the animals, their animals that they got their food from, their milk, their meat from, he caused them to die of diseases. He caused terrible boils, like big spots appear on their skins. He sent hailstorms, such great big hailstorms, that it destroyed the crops. He sent locusts that would eat, here are the locusts, and they would eat all the crops. And Moses kept saying, Pharaoh, if you'll let the people go, God will stop this. He'll stop the locusts eating your food. And Pharaoh just refused. He didn't want the to let the people go. But each time the new plague began, Pharaoh would cry, Moses, okay, I'll let the Jewish people go. Just stop this plague. But as soon as God stopped the plague, then Pharaoh would shout and change his mind. No, I'm not letting the people go. So God kept sending these plagues until finally the last and the worst plague arrived. It was the death of the firstborn son. So every firstborn baby son that was born to the Egyptian people would die. Now, so the, uh, the Jewish people didn't have their sons killed. Then God commanded that the people would sacrifice a lamb and then put the blood of the lamb, it doesn't sound very nice, but put the blood of the lamb on smear it on their doors. Because when God sent the angel of death to kill the firstborn sons, the angel would pass over the homes with this symbol on, with the blood on, so that they would be spared. And so that's why it's called the Passover. So, anyway, this is when the Pharaoh decided enough is enough because he had a firstborn son. So he decided then that he would let the people go. Now, the people were left really quickly because they were worried he might change his mind. They didn't have time to prepare properly and they took some dough but they didn't have time for it to rise into bread, so it remained flat. And that is a little bit like the bread you saw at the, at the beginning. And because it was so hot, it baked into like a flat cracker-like bread, which is called matzah. And they just ran with this matzah from their homes. Now, they hadn't gone very far before the Pharaoh was thinking, oh no, I'm losing my slaves. So he commanded his army to chase after them and bring them back to Egypt. Now the Jews, led by Moses, were rushing on, but they reached the large sea. And this sea, it was just too big to swim across. They were really frightened that Pharaoh's men would soon reach them. So they prayed to God and a miracle occurred. The sea opened up. Two walls of water stood in front of them and a dry sandy path stretched between the sea. The Jews ran across and 
As you can imagine, just as they reached the other side, the walls of water fell and the path disappeared. The sea now separated the Jews from the land of Egypt. They were free, free from slavery. So this is why the Jewish people celebrate and remember this with what is called the Seder plate. And this is where they eat special foods and they each have a significance. The hard boiled eggs, the parsley that's dipped in salt water, Mara, which is a horseradish root. You might have heard of that with horseradish sauce with roast beef. Charisse, which is a mixture of chopped apples, walnuts and wine. The roasted lamb bone and chazare, which is a lettuce, which is like a bitter herb when you eat it on its own. And the lamb bone, it remembers about the sacrifice of the lamb and the blood. The salt water and the salt from the parsley, it rem reminds them of the tears of the slaves as they worked. The charisase, which is the mixture, reminds them of the mortar that they used to mix to build things. The roasted egg is a sign of new life and a new beginning. The bitter herbs remind them of the terrible bitter times as slaves. Uh, and the parsley is also a sign of new life. So that is why they have this special meal. And they celebrate together by telling stories, reading from the uh, Torah. They eat the food, they drink the wine, they pray and they sing. And they remember this every year. So, let us pray. Heavenly Father, spread over us your canopy of peace. Shelter us in the shadow of your wings. Guard us and deliver us. Grant us life and peace, now and forever. Amen. So, the thought for the day is taken from this quote. The further back you can look, the further forward you are likely to see. So it means it's very important to know where you come from so that you can then know where you are going to. And that's important in all our lives. Let us end with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you can listen to Year 5 singing One Bread, One Body, which Mrs Romani has recorded. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.